the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, Sri Lanka's new government expects to bring the interim budget for the first quarter of 2025 in November when the new parliament convenes. The Monetary Policy Board of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka has decided to maintain the standing deposit facility rate and the standing lending facility rate at their current levels. The gains continue at the Colombo Stock Exchange as both the ASPI and S&P SL20 end the week with positives, marking five consecutive days in the green, with positive sentiments to be looked forward to for the coming week. And shares of Micron Technology surge, leading a rally in chip stocks after its strong revenue forecast signaled robust demand for the hardware used to power generative AI technology. From Studio 24, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us. Sri Lanka's new government expects to begin the interim budget for the first quarter of 2025 in November when the new parliament convenes while budget 2025 will be passed in January next year. This is according to National People's Power Economic Council Chief Professor Anil Jayanth Fernando. Anil Jayanth Fernando stated that the new government plans to implement policies outlined in President Anur Kumar Adisanayake's manifesto once the new parliament convenes in the next year. He emphasized that the government's primary focus will be to provide relief to the people and stabilize the country in alignment with the agreements made with the IMF. Fernando also mentioned that the government will carefully evaluate the salary increment proposals introduced by the previous administration, along with the decision to lift the bank on vehicle imports in February next year. He highlighted the commitment to minimize salary disparities in the public sector, with the plans of biannual reviews of the purchasing power of goods and services, leading to adjustments in the state sector wages as needed. Additionally, he remarked that the recent gains in the Colombo Stock Exchange do not fully reflect investor confidence in the new government, noting that the stock market does not capture the broader sentiment of investors regarding the country's economic outlook. The Monetary Policy Board of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka has decided to maintain the standing deposit facility rate and the standing lending facility rate of the Central Bank at their current levels of 8.25% and 9.25% respectively. Uh, the Monetary Policy Board uh, at the meeting held yesterday decided to keep the policy interest rates at the current levels. Accordingly, standing deposit facility rate uh, will be at 8.25 and standing lending facility rate will be at 9.25. The board reached its decision during its meeting yesterday after thoroughly evaluating recent and anticipated macroeconomic developments along with the associated risk and uncertainties on both domestic and global fronts. The objective is to ensure that inflation remains aligned with the medium-term target of 5% while simultaneously allowing the economy to achieve its full potential. It will happen, so we will wait uh, until... Uh, September inflation number, I think most likely uh, Q3 and um, Q2, two consecutive quarters there, quarters, there could be a breach on the downside, which is inflation target has been, would likely be breached, uh, the lower bound in two consecutive quarters. Then that will suddenly trigger uh, for us to write a report by monetary policy report. We will submit that report to the Parliament, to the Minister of Finance, and Minister of Finance will submit that to the Parliament and to the public. So we are in that process. And obviously, the reasons why there is a breach, obviously there are certain reasons, as we explained already, uh, this sharp decline or low, low interest, low inflation at this point, is can see mainly coming from not necessarily the monetary policy kind of actions or demand pressures, is coming from administrative price changes of uh, electric tariff mainly, that's the main source. So that's why we need to, uh, so short term, that's why this low inflation because of that administrative price change. That's going to be persistent, we have to take into account how we can, uh, we need to address that going forward. But if you look at the inflation forecast, uh, the fan chart in our current projections, this short term low inflation uh, will come back to, say, the base effect for next year will come back to towards our target levels. Sri Lanka's merchandise trade deficit widened during the eight months ending August of this year compared to the same period in 2023, driven by a larger expansion in import expenditure relative to export earnings. 
earnings from tourism and work remittances have shown notable improvement during the period, contributing to a strong external current account for the country. Additionally, despite experiencing some intermittent volatility, the Sri Lankan rupee has appreciated against the US dollar by over 7% so far this year. To further enhance the gross official reserve, the central bank has actively purchased a significant amount of foreign exchange from the domestic market. As of the end of last month, GOR stood at 6 billion US dollars, which includes the swap facility obtained from the People's Bank of China. The ongoing extended fund facility arrangement with the IMF is expected to provide additional support along with early finalization of debt restructuring process. These developments will help strengthen the external sector's buffers, thereby enhancing the overall economic stability of the country. Sri Lanka has reintroduced a $20 double entry visa for South Asian visitors as well as a double entry visa for travelers from other countries. This restoration follows the new administration's compliance with a court order to reinstate the previous e-visa system. Sri Lanka has implemented a $75 fee for a single entry visa following an agreement with the VFS Global and IVS GBS which includes an additional $18.50 fee for the private consortium and an additional undisclosed fee of $5. Subsequently, the tourist visa fee was reduced to $50 but is limited to single entry. The newly reinstated double entry visa allows tourists to visit Sri Lanka twice within a 6-month period, providing the opportunity to use the island as a hub for exploring other countries given its advantageous geographical location. However, analysts know that Sri Lankan travel agents have not fully capitalized on this facility, unlike their counterparts in countries like Vietnam, which actively promote Indochina tours. The courts also ordered the arrest of a controller general of the immigration for failing to comply with courts directive. Let's take a short commercial break. Market update on the other side. This is the nightly business report. Welcome back to the nightly business report. The gains continue at the Colombo Stock Exchange as both the ASPI and S&P SO20 end the week with positives, marking five consecutive days in the green with positive sentiments to be looked forward to for the coming week. To get an update on how the bourses perform today, we have with us Netmi Fernando from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. Broad market volatility continued for the second consecutive day amid month-end profit-taking and increased investor participation. The ASPI experienced a downturn in the first hour of trading as month-end selling pressure emerged. However, the index recovered gradually during the day and closed the day at 11,774, gaining 102 for the ninth consecutive day amidst the declining interest rates for government securities. Consumer services sector counters gained a revitalized interest on the back of resumed online visa applications for the tourists. Moreover, MGT witnessed a 5% price increase during the day, whilst Hat National Bank and Haley's PLC contributed to the index positively. Amidst the improved a participation of the high net worth investors turnover stood at lkr 3 billion marking a 120% increase from the monthly average standing at lkr 1.3 billion the capital goods sector solely contributed 36% to the overall turnover whilst the banks and material sectors jointly contributed 34% to the overall turnover Well, as the week wraps up, what are the specifics of market performance over the past few days? For an analysis on the performance throughout the week, we have Vinodini Rajapupati joining us from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. The Colombo Bulls commenced the week on a positive note driven by renewed investor confidence following the presidential election. This stability was further reinforced by a key agreement with the ad hoc bondholder group restoring market confidence and triggering strong upward momentum. As a result, nearly all sectors posted gains with increased participation from both retail investors and high net worth individuals throughout the week. The banking sector and blue chip companies such as Commercial Bank, HNB, Sampath and Melstock Corp recorded significant price increases providing a substantial lift to the overall index. 
Although some volatility surfaced towards the end of the week, the index maintains its upward momentum, closing its ninth consecutive session on a strong note at 11,774. This reflects a 7.4% increase over the last week's close of 10,967, reaching over a two-month high. Renewed interest in the consumer services sector also emerged, driven by the resumption of online visa applications for tourists. Additionally, average daily market turnover surged by 140% over the week to 2.8 billion rupees, with notable contributions from the banking, capital goods and food and beverage and tobacco sectors. Foreign investors also maintained a net selling position during the week, generating a net outflow of 555.9 million rupees. Gold and silver prices retreated today from record highs but were positioned for weekly gains on growing anticipation of another bumper U.S. interest rate cut this year as markets awaited a key inflation report for additional guidance. Spot gold was down at 0.2% at $2,666.81 per ounce, holding below previous session's record peak of $2,685.42. The Federal Reserve's larger-than-usual half percent percentage point reduction last week ignited a rally in gold, which hit consecutive record highs and has gained about 1.8% so far this week. Lower interest rates reduce the opportunity cost of holding bullion, which is also viewed as a safe asset during economic and political turmoil. Market focus is now on the core personal consumption expenditures price index data, the Fed's preferred inflation gauge due later in the day. Oil prices recoup losses today to edge higher but stayed on track for a weekly fall as investors weighed expectations for increased output from Libya and the broader OPEC Plus group against fresh stimulus from top imported China. Brent crude futures were up 0.21% at $71.75 per barrel while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures were up 0.27% to $67.85. On on a weekly basis, Brent crude has shed about 3.7%, while WTI was on track to slide nearly 5.7%. Separately, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries and its allies, a group known as OPEC+, Plus, are currently cutting oil output by a total of 5.86 million BPD, but plans to reverse 180,000 BPD of those cuts in December. The Sri Lankan rupee has appreciated further against the U.S. dollar today compared to yesterday, according to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Accordingly, the buying rate of the U.S. dollar has reduced from 295 rupees and 80 cents to 295 rupees and 30 cents, and the selling rate from 304 rupees and 91 cents to 304 rupees and 33 cents. The rupee has also largely depreciated against a basket of foreign currencies, while it has significantly appreciated against Gulf currencies. Let's take a look now at how the rupee performed against other global currencies. For a short break now, the latest from the corporate world on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Sri Lankan Airlines has once again been recognized as the leading international airline in South Asia under the Visitor's Choice Awards category at the South Asian Travel Awards 2024, marking its second consecutive win in this prestigious category. This accolade reinforces Sri Lankan Airlines' status as a leading powerhouse in South Asia's aviation industry, backed by an unparalleled legacy of service and hospitality. 
With a comprehensive flight schedule serving 85% of the region, the airline continues to set a high standard. The SATA Awards, held annually, celebrate the best in South Asia's hospitality and travel sectors and are widely recognized as some of the region's most prestigious accolades. Endorsed by over 18 regional tourism organizations, winners are chosen based on both industry professionals and passengers, making the awards a true reflection of excellence and customer satisfaction. Sri Lankan Airlines is dedicated to providing an authentically Sri Lankan experience highlighted by the warmth and hospitality for which the country is known. This commitment is evident in every award the airline has received for service, including its continuous four-star rating in the major airline category at the Airline Percentage Experience Association Awards, which is based on verified passenger feedback. Sri Lanka's consulting and advisory services provider DPR transformed tax calculations for Sri Lankan individual taxpayers by launching the nation's first tax website. Continuing its legacy of innovation, DPR has relaunched the enhanced tax website with expansion of tax management offerings today, empowering clients with expert guidance and representation in tax-related matters. This groundbreaking initiative set a new standard in online tax computation and e-return filing. Former Commissioner General of the Inland Revenue DRS Hapu Arachi highlighted the essential role tax consultants like DPR play in ensuring accurate tax calculation for the government while protecting clients' rights through tax relief and incentives. Former Fiscal Advisor to the Minister of Finance P. Guruge also conveyed the critical importance of ethical tax management practices, asserting that such responsibilities lie fundamentally with the government. He emphasized DPR's commitment to fostering transparency and integrity in tax compliance, reinforcing the notion that responsible tax practices are essential for overall economic health of the nation. The new service is now accessible through the DPR tax web portal. Sampath Cards is thrilled to announce its renewed partnership with Hilton Colombo as the official sponsor of the 31st Hilton Colombo Oktoberfest, set to take place from 24th October to the 2nd of November this year. This marks the second consecutive year of collaboration, underscoring Sampath Cards' commitment to providing cardholders with exclusive benefits and access to some of Sri Lanka's most prestigious cultural events. Hilton Colombo's Oktoberfest has established itself as the premier mere German cultural celebration in Sri Lanka. For three decades, this beloved event has captivated attendees with an immersive experience featuring traditional German cuisine and lively music that embodies the vibrant spirit of Oktoberfest. This year's celebration promises to uphold this rich tradition, offering an unparalleled atmosphere of festivity and camaraderie for all who attend. Sri Lanka's publicly listed Brown & Company PLC has announced the acquisition of Aysen Lanka Limited for 1.4 billion rupees. This strategic move marks a significant expansion for Brown & Company, reflecting its commitment to growth and diversification within the market. The acquisition is expected to gently enhance Brown & Company PLC's portfolio and solidify its standing in the industry, paving the way for the future growth and opportunities. Brown & Company successfully completed the acquisition of 100% shareholding in Aysin Laka Private Limited from its former shareholders for a total consideration of 1.4 billion rupees as detailed in a recent stock exchange filing. This strategic move is set to streamline the warehouse operations of Brown's group, allowing for a more efficient logistics framework. By integrating Aysin Laka's capabilities, Brown & Company aims to significantly improve operational efficiency across its subsidiaries, thereby expanding their manufacturing and warehousing capacity. This enhancement is expected to foster better resource management and contribute to the overall growth of the organization. However, in the wake of this positive development, Brown & Company shares closed at 110 rupees, reflecting the complexities of the market responses to corporate acquisitions and ongoing industry dynamics. <laughs> Union Bank, in collaboration with the U.S. Agency for International Developments, catalyzed Sri Lanka private sector development activity and the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce conducted a two-day training program under the theme Unlock Your Global Potential to empower customers on strategies for global growth. 
The sessions included enhancing the business acumen of SMEs and covered several areas under three key pillars, namely export audit, market analysis and go-to-market strategy. A panel discussion was held with the participation of Deputy Team Lead of USAID Catalyze PSD, Darreen Senevaratna. Asanka Ranhoti, the Senior Vice President of SME and Transaction Banking, and Nalin Ahangam, Assistant Vice President in Trade Operations of UB, and joined by experts from various industries. Through the USAID Catalyze Sri Lanka private sector development activity, USAID Sri Lanka enhances private capital infusion into crucial sectors of the Sri Lankan economy, with a particular focus on bolstering the agribusiness sector to catalyze innovation, economic growth and workforce development in this rapidly evolving industry. Let's take a short commercial break. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Stocks in Asia advanced today, led by gains in Hong Kong and other Chinese markets, fueled by China's moves to rev up its economy. Japan's Nikkei 225 index was up more than 1% as the ruling Liberal Democratic Party conducted a leadership election that will determine who is Japan's next Prime Minister. The change in leadership is not expected to lead to any major policy shifts given the similarities between the leading contenders. China's central bank cut its reserve requirement for banks today as part of measures announced this week to help the property industry and support financial markets. Meanwhile, the Shanghai Stock Exchange encountered glitches that hindered order processing and caused delays after the market opened today. In the US, the Dow and Nasdaq rose after memory chip maker Micron's shares climbed up and a robust US jobless claims data put the labor market at ease. Wall Street ended higher on Thursday, with the S&P 500 scoring a record-closing high as chip stocks rallied and investors welcomed some encouraging economic data. The Dow added six-tenths of a percent, the S&P 500 climbed four-tenths, and the Nasdaq notched another six-tenths of a percent. Weekly jobless claims fell more than expected, signaling a steady labor market, while the final reading of gross domestic product confirmed that the economy grew 3 percent in the second quarter. That eased investors' fears that the Federal Reserve's supersized rate cut earlier this month may have been prompted by an unraveling economy. Meanwhile, Chinese leaders, just days after unveiling a stimulus plan, pledged to deploy necessary fiscal spending to spur the world's second-largest economy. That gave metal prices another boost and lifted shares of copper miners such as Freeport MacMoran, as well as lithium miners Albemarle and Arcadium. U.S. listed shares of Chinese firms such as Li Auto, Timu Parent PDD Holdings, and Alibaba all saw healthy gains. Shares of Wells Fargo added more than 5 percent after a report showed the banking giant had sent the Fed a review for lifting asset cap restrictions. And shares of Southwest Airlines gained nearly 5.5 percent after the carrier raised its third quarter revenue forecast. Shares of Micron Technology surge, leading a rally in chip stocks after its strong revenue forecast signaled robust demand for the hardware used to power generative AI technology. Shares of AI chipmaker Micron Technology surged as much as 19 percent on Thursday, thanks to a strong revenue forecast that signaled robust demand for its memory chips. If the stock gains hold, the company could add more than $19 billion to its market value. Micron's high bandwidth memory chips, or HBMs, are used in NVIDIA's popular AI processors. Strong pricing for HBM chips is expected to help boost gross margins, which had been pressured by expensive manufacturing costs. The company's earnings, reported after Wednesday's market close, sparked a broad chip rally Thursday, with several companies, including NVIDIA, Intel, Broadcom and AMD, all posting gains. Micron also said revenue growth for the prior quarter was its highest in a decade. 
And that's all we have for you tonight on the Nightly Business Report, wrapping up the week. We'll see you again on Monday with more key stories across the business globe. I'm Anuradha Vikramasinghe. Thank you very much for watching and have a great weekend.